Kevin McCarthy, you brought this one to my attention, trading at a huge discount to be the next Speaker of the House. Uh, certainly some worries that maybe he's lost his mandate with House Republicans. But I think if you dig into the kind of gossip lore in Washington, there's not a lot to back that up. Um, are you seeing it that way? So uh, we, we had a number of mailbag on this. I think the Kevin McCarthy issue is worth getting into. Um, I could, mean, look, I think the first... Could, uh, can you remind people who Kevin McCarthy is? I don't think I, I did a good job of that. Yeah, so basically there's a market on predicted who will be the next speaker in Congress. And basically it has the whole slate of possible people, both on the Democratic and Republican side. So Kevin McCarthy is currently the uh, Republican leader, um, and there's sort of a conventional wisdom that he is the front runner if the Republicans take Congress. So part of the reason why um, McCarthy's price is depressed right now, it's at 68 percent, is because there's an open question whether or not Republicans are even going to, in fact, um, uh, win the win the House. But um even if they do, I think what the markets are factoring in is that there's no guarantee that McCarthy will be able to consolidate support uh, among Republicans. And we can get into why uh, later, but that that's the reason why the markets are where they are. So so the issue, um, I'll, I'll just get right into it. So the reason why I think that that's a buy at 68 cents and is that... Um, who, like who's going to run against Kevin McCarthy? You know, like Steve Scalise. Yeah. Uh, well, OK, so there, there I think there are two questions here that we have to tackle. So the first is, why is there any doubt uh, with McCarthy? Um, I received a good mailbag comment uh, on this from uh, Boris. Maybe I can just read that and then. Yeah, 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 yeah. It. Let's hit that mailbag. Slap that. OK, bag. so. All right. So he's saying. This is a message from Boris. He's saying, okay, thoughts on betting no on Kevin McCarthy to, to be speaker, question mark. So then he basically has a bunch of bulleted items uh, on why McCarthy might be in trouble. So I'll just read these through. So number one, Matt Gates and company are already coming out strong against him. Number two, he had that leaked recording where he defended Liz Cheney. So expect Trump to come out against him. Number three, it's accepted as fact in Beltway circles that he had an affair with Brene Elmers. This is a former Tea Party Sorry. member of Congress, which is why Paul Ryan got speaker instead of McCarthy. People threatened to release the evidence. That's still out there. Uh, number four, Steve Scalise has broad support. And number five, a Republican majority will be slim. So the Freedom Caucus has a lot of bargaining power. Um, I, I mean, like, interesting and all good points but i mean i'll point towards politico playbook sedition today where they say quote there is no alternative the number two leader steve scalise declared his candidates for majority leader and publicly disclaimed any interest in challenging mccarthy by the way i don't know how many people want mccarthy's job his job's going to be the worst thing ever it's going to be like trying to manage like a subway restaurant that is only has like lazy hungover college kids in it no one is going to want to keep a lid on the dumpster that's going to be the gop conference this conference so um I, like wh who the question is who are people going to vote for if not mccarthy i would say no one so i i think it's a safe bet so were you on the hill back when this mccarthy thing happened the last time around no, no, I wasn't on the Hill back then. Uh, that was right around the time I left. But I was on the Hill when John Boehner was the Speaker of the House. And that was like, literally, I couldn't imagine a more miserable job than um, than what Boehner was doing. And it'll be so much worse for McCarthy with such a thin majority uh, come next year. So yeah, I was actually on the Huckabee campaign back when this McCarthy thing happened. And it came as a shock when he didn't become Speaker that time around. But what, one question I had for you is I remember at that time, there were these affair allegations. But is it in fact the case that that's why McCarthy stepped aside? Because I saw that, I think it was Politico or somewhere else reporting recently on this, and they seem to say part of the issue last time around was the same deal, that McCarthy wasn't able to strike a deal with the Freedom Caucus, and that it was not, in fact, the affair thing. But I, I never quite figured out I, you know, what the you know, reason was. I'll be completely honest and say this was like peak keen dog in Hollywood stage. Like I was probably strung out on Santa Monica Boulevard with like a vape and a bottle of fireball or something at this point in time. Um, but 
I, I just think that the House Republican Conference, I mean, if you go back in time to, it was like 2015, I think, late 2015, basically the Freedom Caucus or RSC or whatever it was at the time, it just publicly beheaded John Boehner. It was like the episode of Game of Thrones where Ned Stark just, you know, um, and I don't think like a lot of people wanted that job after that. Like, you know, they had run John Boehner ragged, thrown him out without even a thank you. And uh, I just got the idea that Paul Ryan was the only person who was willing to do the job that could get some semblance of buy-in from the party. Yeah, I mean, look, I so to be transparent about this, I mean, I have uh, basically maxed out on McCarthy. Yes, I thought I was getting a good deal in the 70s. It's now trading at, uh, at 68%. I, I just think like, okay, I mean, if we look at these different things, I, I think, first of all, McCarthy clearly wants the job, which is actually makes him a surprisingly unique figure in Congress right now. And, um, you know, he's just sort of showed a track record of uh, being very malleable. So even if you're looking at the challenge from the right, maybe they'll come up with another candidate to run against him. But at the end of the day, I mean, I think the Freedom Caucus and other kind of right wing uh, members of Congress are likely to get about the best deal out of McCarthy that they can get from anyone. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, OK, let's say there was an affair which hasn't really been substantiated. I mean, I think the Republican Party has just gone so far beyond holding people accountable for personal scandals. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. of all of all people, I don't think this is the time and place that's going to get litigated. 